Let's go to the main menu and click Tools. In the search box, type in Canvas. Locate the menu Content and click Canvas. Now when Canvas opens up, it opens it as a floating window filling up your screen. This is really ideal because you need as much space as possible. If you have a second monitor, I highly recommend using it for working with Canvas. Now let's look at the interface and work our way through the tool. Now when you first open up, I highly recommend you go right to the right, locate the document title, click in it, you'll notice it is all highlighted and give it a name. So let's call this my first Canvas. Let's explore the menu options at the right. These items control the artboard settings. So we can turn the grid on or off and we can change the size and thickness and color of those grid lines. We can go from a page view. Let me zoom out by clicking on the magnifying glass. You can see the page view because we're looking at one page. This is important if you plan to print this out. If we uncheck it, now it's all one giant canvas and essentially you're only going to view it while you're in Logos. Let's click page view to turn it back on. We can also change the background color. Now connection arrows, connection points, and guides are really helpful when you're trying to connect objects. You can also change the paper size, so if you are printing to larger paper, this allows you to click it and then choose your paper size like 8.5 by 11 or 8.5 by 14. Let's leave the default. You can also change your view from portrait to landscape as well. So let's click landscape. Our canvas is now formatted with landscape. Now to move the canvas around, you have a couple options. If you follow your mouse just to the right, you'll see a vertical scroll bar that'll allow you to go up and down. And if you follow your mouse at the bottom, we can move it left to right. You can also use your touchpad to go up and down. I haven't had much success going left to right. And you can use your scroll wheel on your mouse to go up and down. If your mouse wheel has the ability to click on an object, you can hold it down and now you can pretty much move the canvas any way you want. So be aware of that option. All right, so that's the right side of the menu. Let's go over to the left and look at the hamburger menu. And that's because the three horizontal lines look like a hamburger. Now, currently we have at the top a search box. So for example, if I were to type in a word square and press enter, I can see all those square objects right here. This makes it easier to find a particular object without having to scroll down and working through the menus. Let's click the X to clear our search. The next section is favorite. So if there's objects that you use on a regular basis, you're going to want to save a favorite. Let's do this. So I'm going to go down to highlights and I'm just going to drag and drop this little green circle here. Now, if I want this to be a favorite, I have to first make sure it's selected, then click the plus sign and you can see it's now added here. So if I go back to this object while it's selected and press delete, it's been removed from my canvas. Now, if I click and drag the object, or if I simply click the object once, it'll be added to the canvas. Now, if you want to remove something you've just done or undo, you've got these two options right here. The arrow to the left is undo, and if I click that once or click it twice, both objects have been removed. But if I click the redo button, now they're all brought back. I'm going to click undo one more time. If we want to remove this favorite, we got to click on edit, and then we can locate the object and click the X associated with the object and that will remove. We need to click save to keep this change. Go ahead and click save. The next section is info cards. We'll come back to that in a minute. Now underneath info cards are all the various objects you can bring into the canvas. You can see the colorful objects here. If we scroll down, we have basic objects, lines and arrows, hand drawn, various shapes, and then text. Besides these objects, you can also insert a passage. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's click insert passage. Let's type in John 3, 16 through 18. Notice the drop down menu confirms our Bible reference. Let's click the first one. We can choose our Bible translation. We can do Hebrew and Greek as well as our English translations. Let's leave New King James Version and then click add to canvas. Our text has been added. Now notice in this particular situation, we've got two vertical bars. Turns out that allows you to change the width of the object. So we can use both bars to do that. Now, if we want to go inside the object, we have to first select the object, which we already have done, and then click on one of the words in the object. So for example, if I click on God, notice the two vertical bars have gone away, but now God is selected. 
Now that we're in the object, we can click on anything else in there. So if I click on the word he, it's now selected. Now you notice at the left, the info cards have turned on. Let's click on God. I want to see this one. Now it's very important to understand what these info cards are displaying and their purpose. So first, notice that we have the article ha, and then we have the Greek word theos. That's because in the Greek, there is an article there, but the translator didn't put it in there. So if we wanted the card for God, we got to make sure we grab the Thales card. I'm going to drag Thales over to the right. Notice that Logos inserted the card and drew a line to that. Over at the right, the window is now changed for that particular object. So now we can change some of these items. For example, this line, I'd like to see that a little bit different. To do that, I must click on the line first. You now can see it's selected. And look at this, the menu has changed. If we click the arrow line, the pattern line, we can move to a solid line. Now, something like this, we might want to change the opacity or the transparency so we can see the underlying text. So probably like 50% would probably be really good. And press Enter, and there you go. Now, we can drag this info card anywhere we want, and we can see the line will follow. That's really handy. you notice there's a shortcut icon to the top right of the box. Let's click on that. And sure enough, it goes to a Bible word study report and generates a word study for us. Very handy. Let's go back to Canvas. Now we have lots of options here at the right. I'm not gonna go through all these, but you can explore these to see if you prefer these options. You can change the color, the fill, the border, etc. That's the style. We can also change the text if we want to. You can see the various options there. And we also can arrange. This is very important when you have multiple objects. So I'm going to grab the second card for God. Now remember, look at the details of the card. This first card here has to do with the article. The second one is Theos. Let's drag that in. Now notice these orange lines. Those are the guidelines to help you keep things aligned. I think they're really handy. So if we wanted to align it with the top, there's that guide. If we wanted to be centered, there's the line there, etc. So lots of possibilities. Now I'm going to purposely misalign it. I'm going to click on, I'm going to leave that line dotted, and I'm going to select the first object, hold down the shift button, and click the second object. So now there's two objects selected. Notice I'm in the arrange and see what our options are. Now we can arrange to the front, to the back, but what I'm interested in is what's down here, and that is the align buttons. So if we wanted to align these center-wise, middle-wise, here is the button we click on. I'm going to click on that. Now it is aligned. Now notice below we have a distribution option, horizontal, vertical. Let's click on the God box, drag that down below. And now we've got three objects, they're vertical. Let's click on the canvas to deselect everything. And then hold down the shift button, click the God box once, the Theo box info card second, and then the object third of text. Let's go to the right, scroll down, and let's choose distribute vertical. Notice what happened? Now all three objects are vertically distributed equally. This will save you a lot of time when you have multiple objects. So be aware of that option. You can also click the group button. So now the whole thing is one object. We can group them and move all three objects without messing with all our alignment. Now to remove the object from the group, just click one object and choose the option remove from group. Let's click on the second object. Now notice when we clicked on the object, we got that whole box around us. Let's click that object one more time. That will give us access to remove from group. Let's go to our third object, click it once. Notice everything's selected, click it one more time, remove from group. Now if we click all three objects again, let's center those. So there's the align option. Let's click the center alignment. And now all three objects are aligned. So as you can see, there's a lot of flexibility here that I think will make it a little bit easier for you to manage and make it look aesthetically pleasing. Now, you may have noticed at the bottom, there's a page number. You can create multiple pages with one single document. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. We can click the stoplight menu here, and we can click Insert Page. We can right-click on the actual page and choose Insert. We can also click the plus symbol. Let's do that. Page two has been inserted. Now, Logos gives you the ability to link pages as well. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down at the left and we're going to click on this text box and drag it into our canvas. Now, this text box looks pretty obnoxious with all these colors. Let's go ahead and change these. Yours may be different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the object and over at the right, I've got those three tabs, style, text, and arrange. Let's click on style. Notice we have a border here. I'm going to uncheck that. And then let's click on text. You can see I have highlight the background green. Let's get rid of that. And then the color text, I'm going to click on that and make that black and click apply. All right, now we look like a normal text box. Now, if we want to link this to a different page, all we got to do is right click on the object and you'll see this option, edit link. Let's click it. Now, notice we can link an object to a website which is real handy, or we can link it to a page in Canvas. Let's click the circle next to link to a page in this Canvas, and then click page one to open the drop-down menu. And there's our other page. So we are in currently page two. We want to link to page one. Let's click apply. Notice that a link has appeared. And if we click that link, we're back at page one. Let's create a link from page one to page two. Let's left click on this text box, drag it over, Let's right click on that box, choose edit link, click the circle next to link to a page in this canvas, click the drop down menu page one, choose page two, click apply. There's our link. Now, if you click off the page and that link disappears, that's okay. Just click on the object and the link will appear. And if we click that link, we're now at page two. Now, keep in mind, since you're the owner and creator of this document, you're gonna see these options to edit. But should you share this document, those options will go away and the user won't see that. They'll just see the links. So in review, the left side is a great way to insert objects. The right side lets you format objects, color, borders, lines, etc. Now, one thing we need to show you how to do is using lines. So let's click on page one and show you how you can connect objects. Now, when I flow my mouse over the info cards, you'll see a series of X's around the border and then these blue triangles. Now, I'm going to flow my mouse over the blue triangle, and you'll notice a pop-up menu has appeared. So there's several options. I'm just going to simply left-click on the triangle and drag to the right. Look what happened. An arrow just popped right out. And if I keep dragging it to another object, you'll see that Logos tries to connect it. Now, I'm just going to take the one at the top here. That's pretty straightforward. So now this card is connected. And if I left-click on the second card and, let's say, drag and drop it, the arrow goes along for the ride. Now, if we float our mouse over the object again, we see these small X's. I'm going to float my mouse a little bit lower to the bottom center, and you'll notice a green circle appears over the X. If I left-click on that and drag down, an arrow appears there as well. I'm going to just drag it to this text box to the left. Now, notice that when I dragged it, the X's appeared, and when the X's appear and I float my mouse over it, I get the green circle. And if I release, the X is there. Now, notice the line has these dots. These dots allow you to change the direction of the arrow. So there's a little bit of modification that can be done, and you can use that to do so. Now, when it comes to disconnecting arrows, I have found this to be very frustrating in the Logos tool. I think the easiest thing to do is click the line and then press delete, and then simply redraw the line that you want. If you try to go in there and left click and try to drag it and move it, sometimes it works great like it did here. Sometimes it doesn't work as nicely. Another option the Canvas is the freehand writing tool. Right up here, you can see that. Let's click on that object. Now notice that a new menu appears at the top. We have the drawing color, the line thickness. We can discard and add drawing. I'm just gonna draw a simple circle. There it is and release the mouse. Now, at this point, I'm just drawing it. If I press Control Z, I can undo what I've just drawn and I can redraw something new. Once you're ready to commit to what you've drawn, then click Add to Drawing, and you'll see that the object has been added to your layout as a single object. Now we can click on that box, move it around, and we can click the borders to resize. So you can see how we can redo that just the way you want it. Now, if you want to draw a new freehand, then you would click this, delete it, and then click freehand again and draw any way you want. I'm going to click discard. Now let's go inside the text box and show you another feature. And that is you can actually move text around within the text box. So remember, when you have a Bible verse box 
like this. You click once to select the box, and then you click a second time on a particular word. I'm going to click on four here, and now I can select that word, but if I left-click on it, I can actually drag it, and this will allow you to do block diagramming within the canvas. So that's really handy. Now, before we wrap up Canvas, I want to show you some free downloadable Canvas documents that really demonstrate how you can use this tool. Let's go to Docs, and let's go to Public. Then at the left, locate Canvas and click it. Now, I'm just going to open up a couple canvases. Here I have Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. I'm going to hold down the Control button. Then I'm going to click on Books of the Bible, Periodic Table. I'm going to click on B.B. Warfield's Family Tree. I'm going to click on 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, Tree Diagram. Fruit of the Spirit, and then John 3.16 diagram. Then I'm going to click Add to the Docs. Wait for that blue bar to disappear. That'll let you know the downloading is complete. And I'm going to click on Yours. Now I'm going to go ahead and open each one of these very quickly. I'm going to click John 3.16 diagram. In order to view the whole document quickly, I recommend going up here to the percentage, click on it, and then choose Fit to Window. And so here's a great little diagram of what someone has done with John 3.16. Pretty cool. Let's go back to Docs, and let's choose 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, tree diagram. Again, to see the document quickly, we'll click on 100%, choose Fit to Window, and there we go, a wonderful document of 1 Corinthians 13. Let's click the X to close this document. Let's click Docs. Let's look at B.B. Warfield's Family Tree. We'll click on that document. Again, click on 100%, choose Fit to Window, and there you go. Let's click the X to close this document. Let's go back to Docs. Let's go Books of the Bible Periodic Table. Again, click 100%, choose Fit to Window, and there you go. The whole Books of the Bible listed as a periodic table. So as you can see, you're only limited by your creativity. I hope you have found this training video introducing you to Canvas as a wonderful way to explore the scriptures visually and then share it with others.